All righty, we are. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. We are late, but we're here. We're here. Um, uh, that's what I thought. Yeah. I was in the chair and I was sitting in the chair and went Yeah. That's probably rest you needed, though. I do that all the time. All the time. Well, maybe we better get you some projects so you don't sleep your life away. Uh, <laughs> even when you down here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, wow. Is it in your medication? That's probably what it is. Yeah. All right. We already running late now. Had I acted like somebody acted with me on Sunday, I have a problem. But let's say we in James three. Uh, we're going to take the, I think it's the second half, right? Didn't we do the, the first part? We did the first part. Okay, yeah. We, I think we start at verses um, 13. Yeah, so, but somebody pray us in. Amen. Amen. Lord, feed yeah. your people. Thank you for my being here. Thank you for Miss Edna showing up, being part of the Bible study again. Lord, bless her. Keep her. Help her mind, Lord. Lord, just constantly be with her. Don't let her stay up in that room by herself. Father, have your way in this word today. Open up our mind. Open up our intellect. Father, don't forget your messenger. Yes, Feed me what you want me to know. Yes, In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Like I say, we gonna, we are at James 3. We're going to finish the second half, which is verses 13 through 18. Y'all want to read it? Yes. I think we can get through with the time left. You know, when we... Yeah, we talk about God's time, but we just get to doing other things. That's that that's that hypocrisy we're gonna talk about. We can't do one way we can't say one way and then tell other people something different. Yeah. Thirteen. Thirteen. Who is a wise man and doeth with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. Fourteen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're so distracted now. That's why I like to come in with the atmosphere set with prayer, not a whole bunch of jibber jab. <laughs> Fourteen. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. This is this wisdom is that you sin not from above, but it's earthly, but it's very sensual and devilish. James, yeah, 3, verse James, 16. James 3. Okay. James 3. All right. Did you said 315? 316. Okay. Okay. Uh, for, for where envy, 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 and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Yes. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. 18. 
And the fruit of the righteousness is sown in peace for them that make peace. Okay. So we coming in. We just read scriptures right on time. So we're talking about wisdom. You know, in James, we're talking about wisdom. And say, who is a wise man endued with the knowledge among you? Okay. We talk about people. You know, people come and talk to us. And, you know, a lot of times when they say stuff to us, they don't have no knowledge behind it. There's no education behind it. You know, gossip, backbiting, stuff like that. Ain't got no, no nothing behind it. So we need to listen to those, the counsel that are wise. You know, I say that all the time about, you know, the pulpit. They just getting up there preaching and whatever they think or saying whatever's on their heart. And sometimes it don't even be with the atmosphere. You know, you don't, don't even be on, in the atmosphere. You can tell when it's of God when when everything is on one accord. Yeah. You know, and then I want to say, too, um, I tried to get that message up. I told you I was going to do the moment of truth. I tried to get it up. But like I say, I'm divorcing Cox Cable and T-Mobile and all that because... I'm having issues with them, and I'm going to try to find <laughs> some other avenues. So that video should be put up by, if it ain't, it's supposed to be loading. If it ain't being put up by tonight or whatever, by Thursday or maybe tomorrow, I don't know. But look, it's coming up. You know, that message I was talking about, show me the glory, you know, uh, about Moses or whatever. But um, see, the enemy always constantly hitting at you or whatever. But like I say, when there is no... One accord, you know, if you're sitting in a, in a synagogue or a, a building and you're getting sleepy, then that mean that word ain't for you. You mean it ain't touching nothing because trust and believe when the Holy Spirit got a message for you that you will be awake and alert. You'll know that it's for you. Like the young lady said last Sunday, she knew that prophecy was for her because she knew that the word, it was right, it was hitting all points, and it had her up. But what the part that wasn't for her, you know, she just going to sleep. You know, we ain't supposed to, y'all already know, I already taught this, you know, Jesus, I couldn't find him, you know, being belonging to a synagogue or anything. I followed him going and teaching in synagogues, you know, and that's what he called me to be is a teacher to go and help, you know, and stuff like that. But just to be belong to a building or belong to a roster, you know, and just be sitting there, y'all know I get bored. You know, I don't want to sit there. Y'all know I'm always, I get bored, it's time for me to go. If I'm not doing nothing in the ministry to keep me, you know, feel like I'm helping to save souls or do anything like that, it's time for me to go find whatever God want me to do or whatever. Like I said, it's right time for, you know, my birthday month coming up because like I say, I go in stealth mode. I sit and I hear what God want me to do. I mean, I come do my Bible studies and everything, but if it ain't God coming out of my mouth, it's not, it's nothing to me. I just, I quiet. I don't even testify. You know, I just, I'm, I'm trying to hear God. I listen more than I speak during the month of October. That's my sabbatical. I spend it with God. So that's why I say don't, don't nobody take it personal. And that's wisdom. You, because you got to sit with God sometime to see what God want to say to you. You know, you can't keep going to everybody and this preacher and prophetess and everything. Maybe that ain't from God. Maybe that ain't from you. You can receive a message that's not from you and send your life into a whole whirlwind. Because you, oh, just because it come from a man or woman of God that's standing behind a pulpit, that don't mean that that word is for you. It may be for somebody in the building, or maybe that's just what that, that individual felt off of their heart or whatever. Maybe they want to get off their chest. Pastor Ronnie was saying last week, that Sunday, talking about getting up there, uh, putting stuff off your chest and all that kind of stuff or whatever. People do that. And it's sad that people do, but people do that. Wisdom would be, you know, you know if the spirit bears witness with you. And if the spirit bears witness with you, you're up, attentive, and listening. If you are trying to keep your eyes open, then obviously you should stay at home in the bed because that message ain't hitting you nowhere. Right. It's not getting anything. So, and it said, like, show good conversation. You can't have a conversation if you're talking about stuff that you don't even know. If you're not educated. Gossip ain't conversation. Gossip is just rumors just sending stuff around. You can, a good conversation is rooted and grounded in knowledge and is education behind it. 
You know something about it. But we sometimes we don't want to sit and study nothing. We just want to get before people, especially in, in ministry. There's so many apostles and stuff rising up so quickly, younger than me. How you get to be an apostle? You ain't even got the degrees and the background and the doctrine that I got, but you're an apostle. Want to go over here and say something and lay hands on, be careful who lay hands on you. I done told you that several times. I'm teaching you something. They spirits transfer. Be careful who lay hands on you. Yes. And then the bitter envying and strife in their hearts. We got people in the pulpit with that tradition, which got bitterness and envy in their heart, you know, because there's a few prophets that I know you know, one, I, I ain't heard from him in a minute. That means I must go hear from him. But uh, always wanted somebody up under him. You know, always, you know, wanted a congregation or, you know, a following or whatever. You don't create a following or make a following. You just teach what you teach, know what you know, and people follow you. I've been with y'all 10 years or more now. I ain't had to beat y'all upside the head and try to convince y'all to follow me. Right. I ain't had no membership roster. Y'all had to join or nothing. Every, t every what, Tuesday? Well, we was doing Thursday at first. We was doing another day. I forget, some other day. But every time y'all welcome me in the door because y'all getting something out of it. It's not because I'm trying to make y'all up under me or try to have a following or anything like that. Jesus didn't do that. Everywhere he stood, they traced him. Yes, they he was not a member of any building. He was the church. Who was his pastor? Himself and his father. Who was Elijah pastor? That's what I'm saying. You know, that I, I, and then they got, you know, got get themselves in all this situation. Like I said, I'm, he must be finna show up. I ain't heard of this prophet in a minute. But uh it's been a while since I've been to his his service. But always wanted a, a following, and when he didn't get a following or people up under him. He would just go off and be off to himself, and then he'd come back and get a whim and want to come back and try it again with a new uh, attitude or a new you know, way to do things or whatever. But that tradition is what's killing us. There is so much tradition. Tradition didn't save nobody. Like I say, the law, you know, there are people that know the letter. They know the law, but they don't know the spirit. We don't walk. I mean, he said, it didn't say he did away with the law. It said he come to fulfill the Old Testament. It didn't say he did away. We don't do away with it, but he, we walk by spirit and in truth. Now, the truth part is the law, but we walk by spirit. We too busy walking by the letter, you know, the, what you call the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. They want to be all up in the law. And, you know, you got to do it this way and do it that way. And that's what's running the young people out of the, out of the churches. They don't want to, you know, they can't come to grips with stuff like that. Yes, I was raised that way. Yes, it was beautiful. Yes, it shaped and molded me. Yes, but some of that stuff don't work no more. Some of that stuff, we, I mean, when we, I, I got a whole doctorate degree. Why would I need to be up under somebody? God, I got to be led by God. I got to be honored by God to do what God want to do. Who am I to sit and warm up a pew? Who am I to sit in a dignified chair and just sit there trying to boost the pastor or whoever of the, the service up all the time. That would be wasting my doctrine. God would take it from me. You know, I might start getting dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever. You know, you start reprobating mind, start losing your mind. Why would I, if, if it don't work for me like that, why would I consider anybody else? Or, well, you got to be on my roster. You got to, you got to, you know, you got to be here. You know, the scriptures say you got to know God. Yes. That's what the scriptures say. In order to get into the kingdom of heaven, you got to know God. Now, if you don't know God, then yeah, you have a problem. But if you know God and you have a relationship with God, having a relationship with a leader, a teacher, a preacher, anybody ain't going to do you no good because you got to know God. And if you can hear God for yourself, that is the ultimate because that's the one you need to listen to. I listen to God because when, when them leaders and teachers and stuff ain't there, who was going to be there for me? Where was the leaders and teachers when I was in COVID? Mm -hmm. Which one of them came to my bedside? Mm -hmm. Which one of them was there? I mean, literally. Which leader or teacher came there? Mm -hmm. Now, there were some leaders that called me on the phone and prayed with me. I thank the Lord for them. They kept me going or whatever. But show me a leader that was on my bedside when I had COVID. They were too scared for their own life. 
But yeah, I got to be a member. Or I got to be on your church roll. I don't believe in that. I believe that I am the church. I don't believe in joining no church. I don't believe in sitting there being a pew warmer. And like I said before, I don't believe in being indignified up, you know, boosting somebody else up. If they need me to boost them up, they ain't got enough God. They ought to know for themselves. So, um, we are 707, all that. <laughs> but um, some of them is just bitter. Some of them got their own agenda in their heart. And, you know, they want to be seen. They want to be, you know, they want to look out at the crowd and feel like they making a difference and doing. Just because I look out at y'all don't mean I'm making a difference in y'all life. I got to see some change. Yeah. I got to see something happen. You know, when you interact with me, you call me, talk to me, ask me a question, you know, and I know you're doing something. I know I'm getting something out of it. Just like with those clients. As I see change in their life, we did, like I said, we did the alter ego contest today. And there's this one client, I ain't going to say her name on here. This one client, she was so beautiful, nobody recognized who she was. Because her alter ego was a confident young lady. I ain't going to tell a diagnosis. But she did nobody recognize who she was. And with that, we took her coping skills to say, this is how you wake up every day. You put your mind, put your, I have to put my face on every day. Because to come out and deal with some of the stuff I deal with, you know, or something. The other day, <laughs> and I'm getting here, the strife and envy. You know, I got carry things in my heart all the time. I had a deja vu moment. Somebody came and brought me a piece of paper, say, sign here. I signed it. That was back in the day. I said, that's how I got here. He did it again. And I looked at it. I signed it again. And I instantly I felt, that's how I got in this situation. That's how I got, you know, everything going on in my life in this situation. I said, Lord, what are you doing? What are you saying? And it reminded me of the position that I had said for. So I said, because I was going to get my stuff. And y'all already told y'all I was there was a part-time position at the hospital. And my clinical was telling me that I could get, you know, all the hours and stuff quicker because it's a bigger corporation. And then I found out that they give full benefits, health, dental, all of that. I'm just waiting for my stuff to come through so I can go sign up for that part-time position. But I messed around there and sabotaged myself because I signed a piece of paper that I can't do that now. So I'm not going to cap off the money, the, the zeros I thought I was going to cap off. Because, you know, I'm going along and, you know, I wasn't paying attention. I'm just doing. And I, I done signed myself out of my own blessing that I thought I was going to do. Right. But it's got to be in the will of God because it happened just, it, everything, it lines up right. or whatever. So I thought I was going to make X amount of dollars, but I guess God said not so. So... All right, Lord, baby, I ain't ready for them zeros yet, so I guess I'll sit and do what I got. Because I'm, you know, I'm tired. I want to put my, I, you know, I've been doing my nails since Marcus was a baby, before he was a baby. You know, I've been trying to get my life back together. I'm trying to put me back together, and that's what's got me, I guess, complacent or uncomfortable, as we learned today. But um, it's just, I, every time I feel like I'm getting ready to do something, here comes something else. Life happens. Or whatever. So wisdom for me would be, I need to pay attention. Take a moment of breath before I just don't <laughs> do things. Right. I sign on the dotted line. You know, ain't thinking, you know, just going happy, go lucky. You know, because, you know, I was happy for the individual. Because, you know, we get to sign on that. But then I thought about it after being happy for the individual. I'm like, I just lock myself with a lid. It's going to cap off. I ain't going to get the zeros that I thought I was going to get. So I said, okay, Lord, I guess I'm not ready for that. Anyway, it said the wisdom descended not above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. That's what I'm talking about. It's the sensual part. In our senses, in our, our eyes, ears, our senses, the things that the leaders are doing, that's tradition. It's based around our senses. You know, how, um, how do I explain that? It's like, it's part of our ego. It's part of who we are. You know, it's like the animals want to beat on their chest. You know, it's all about them and their senses. You can't live life by your senses. That's living life by the flesh. You can't live life by your emotions. That's living life by the flesh. You got to live life by spirit. 
Walk in spirit and in truth. Which means spirit don't even bother your senses. You know, you, you can't even pay attention to your senses because if you pay attention to your senses, if you pay attention to your emotions, it will throw you out of the spirit. You won't be able to manage because like I said, you can't walk in the flesh and in the spirit at the same time. You cannot be spiritually minded and carnally minded at the same time. Let me say it like that. You can't think of ways of the, so I'm thinking carnally minded because I'm ready to get all these zeros, get my house, get my car, I'm finna upgrade the CT5, I'm finna get all my, the debt and everything that I got, I'm finna put all that, I'm thinking carnally minded when God is thinking spiritually minded. There's some things that need to take place, that need to happen. Because you know me, I can throw a cash out and pay somebody off, you know, that's just me. But God is saying, you know, there's some other things that, they, that need to take place. You know, you just can't run off and do this all the time. So I'm in my senses, in my flesh. For where envy and strife, there is confusion in every evil work. When we come in against each other all the time, you know, the envy and the strife that goes on, um, there's a tension in the church, in the body of Christ lately, that... Um, like some don't have buildings and some are talking about people that have buildings. Jesus didn't have no building. But there's a tension because they want to bring it up and try to make somebody feel less than or whatever. It's, it's a lot of adversity and a lot of things going on. Like I was saying that um, that event I was trying to do. You know, church hurt ain't got nothing to do with the leader. Church hurt got to do with you. It's between your relationship and God and you trying to put, cast the blame on somebody else. Right. But because people thought it was going to be airing out their laundry or whatever, you know, things happened. God said it was going to be a crisis, so he shut it down or whatever. But that's what I'm saying. There's, we got to pay attention to the tension that's behind the scenes. That's the evil work that's being done. The agenda in the hearts of the leaders. It may sound good, but pay attention to the back, the, the, the what's not being said. Yeah. You know, you got you listen to what you hear, but listen to the, the part that, you know, read between the lines mm. because there's always something there. There's a tension. That's, I, I, he won't let me get off of it. There's a tension that's simmering in the body of Christ that's keeping us on edge. Mm. It's a doctrine that's being preached that's not of God. That he didn't cause, you know, if you think about Jesus and how he walked and how he rose and make your life line up to that, then you'll have the correct doctrine. But to be sitting in a building and you're not doing anything and, and you feeling like, uh, or maybe you are doing something, but maybe God, you know, he did give some five talents, some he, he gave one talent, you know, maybe he wants you to do something else. And if that place is hindering you from doing all that God wants you to do, then that's, you're not living by the will of God. So, but as I said, there's a tension that's rising in, that's, I ain't gonna say rising, that's been in, within the body of Christ. It's con, a sense of confusion because we paying attention, we too busy following, but God has raised all of us up with him on the inside. That means he raises you up to be a leader too. Why? Because he was a leader. He don't raise you to follow all the time. And you know what? Even the leaders follow. Even I follow. Yeah. I have to follow. You know, because if you ain't following somebody, I don't know it all. I haven't arrived. I need, you know, iron shopping's iron. There's, some, I got, there's gotta be somebody that I look up to. If there's not and I've already arrived, I'm gonna be in my flesh thinking I'm all this, that, and a bag of chips. No, I follow. I look whoever God want me to follow behind and I listen. And I'm going to tell you like this. All of them ain't in the church. Because you got so much going on in the church. We got so much discord yeah. and stuff amongst us. Yeah, we, got that. we talk about wisdom today. We got to pay attention. We got to really look at what the church is what, for what it is. If it's not benefiting us to what it is, then are we wasting our time? Are we living in vain? Or are we just sitting there, just we on the roll call? Being on the church roster is not going to get you into heaven. The scripture even tell you, everybody that say, Lord, Lord, ain't going to make it in. Yeah, right. So if you own the church roster, but you ain't doing nothing that God say, you ain't doing the will of the Father, you're not going to make it in. Right. I believe that Judas even made it in because he did the will of the Father. 
That's what he was. I'm talking about Judas Issacharian, not Judas, Jesus' brother. Judas Issacharian. Yeah. Yeah. He did what God created him to do. He was created to have the Son of God crucified. And I believe because he did what he was created to do, I believe when Jesus went down to the lower parts of the earth, that's how I call it, that's hell. When he went down to the lower parts of the earth and brought those up that wanted to come up, you know, Jezebel was one of them that didn't want to come up. When he brought those up, I believe Judas is sitting in, 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 in the kingdom of God with God. Because Judas did what he was called commissioned to do, what he's created to do. I don't care what it is. I was saying on that video, there's a lot of people in your life that are racking hell in your life and they're commissioned there and ordained there by God to get you to move in a certain direction. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar was God's servant. Y'all remember Nebuchadnezzar yeah. and the hell that he created and yeah. did all that? He was God's servant. We don't want to read the Bible for what it is. Mm -hmm. We don't want to read it as it say. But you know what? I love Nebuchadnezzar because he was the one that, that repented. Mm -hmm. He was the one that turned from his ways and he repented back to God. Mm -hmm. I love Nebuchadnezzar. The one that was turned, turned, turned to the animal. Yeah, like Jezebel, he fell on all fours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, he did. But uh, let's go 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Okay, the wisdom that comes from God got peace in it. Yes. If you got somebody pressuring you to do something, is that peaceful? No. Is that gentle? No. Is that pure? No. So if you're being pressured into doing something, then can we safely say that that ain't from God? Because God don't have to pressure us to do anything. He said we are persuaded or he knows how to lead us in a direction. So I ain't persuaded y'all to do nothing. Y'all been having me come in here all these years and y'all follow. Wherever I go, y'all show up. Same way with my clients. I love it. I don't, I don't even, you know, I put on Facebook where I'm at or whatever. And next thing you know, before you know it, all them clients show up where I'm at. Every last one of them. I don't tell them where I'm going. Half the time, I don't even tell them when I'm leaving or whatever. But they all show up for some reason because they chase the anointing just like y'all chase the anointing. The anointing just don't be here and in the and in church. The anointing is is all the time. If I'm walking in Christ, at work I, it's the anointing. You know, He brings stuff back to my remembrance. All that education I got, if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, I'd be crazy because I wouldn't be able to remember all that. The way He, you know, hits with them clients and the way He make you know make a break and stuff. It's the anointing. It's God. I give God all the glory. He may gave me the education, but it's Him. It's him that flow. And, and you know, breakthroughs is happening and everything. Same way with my leader. He's anointed for what he do. I love the mind of that man. He is just brilliant. Just brilliant. If, 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 if certain circumstances wasn't what it was, maybe he was the one. But <laughs> because we think alike. We're so much alike. And I see where we're different too. But his mind is so brilliant. And he just walks in the same energy that I walk in because I see God moving in him. And the clients have even said they see the, the aura, I want to say, your of boss, him. Boss. My boss, yeah. My leader at work, they see the aura. It's when he starts to speak, he commands the attention of the whole room. And it's a gentle speech. It's, it's pure. And he comes, he can explain a diagnosis or a therapy approach like that, like like I said, I met him when he explained that cognitive behavioral therapy. He made it in a way that even I got it. And the way it was so plain, he made it like every day. You know, that's wisdom. He has studied, and he got two more degrees than I do, I think. But he has studied, and he has understood what he studied to the point where he has lived it and to where he can talk it. I mean, he just, there's like, everybody talk about, I walk and talk the Bible. Well, that's, that's all I know is what comes off my mouth. You know, it ain't Medicaid compliant all the time, but I got to say what I know. But he's able, if you saw the two of us, it's, it, we're so much alike, but yeah, we're so much different too. But that's what I'm saying. It's pure. It comes from a pure place. And I love his heart. The things that he's doing for his heart. And I know it's of his heart. 
Yeah, because I ain't gonna tell all his business, but he's done certain things that no regular person would have done if it wasn't from the heart. Just like there's things, you know, I go and give my all or whatever, I wouldn't do it if it wasn't from my heart. You know, stuff like that. But when you find a real person like that, then you know you ought to hang on to him. You know, you ought to be around. You know, you ought to help that individual. That's what, what he was saying when I came in here, touching our thine anointed, do that prophet no harm. Right. That's one of, one of God's chosen. Because, you know, you can see it in how, you know, how he maneuvers and in, in his knowledge and how he presents, you know, the, the diagnosis and how he, you know, does what he does, the treatments and all of that. You can see it. I am glad that I am in his presence to learn from him. What they say, like I was reading Ruth, to glean from him, his education, his knowledge or whatever, because it's going to make me a better therapist in everything. But I'm just saying, you can tell when somebody's doing something from a pure heart and when somebody's doing something because, you know, they just trying to get money or maybe they got an agenda behind it or something like that. Pay attention this week. This is your homework. Because like I said, I said I had one Sunday, but I realized I got two Sundays before the end of this month. Then I can say, other than Bible study and what God asked me to do, I'm going to be in stealth mode. You know, it's just me and God. I just, y'all probably won't see me unless he had me put something up on YouTube or whatever. I, it's just me. I don't, I'd be, some, I'm on my sabbatical for the month of October. Y'all know I go on sabbatical for my birthday month because I, I go into the next year understanding what God wants to do. It's not about me and what I want to do because I'll lead y'all to hell trying to, <laughs> trying to see what I'm doing. I need to hear from God. So, right. But I, yeah, it's got to be God leading. But um, what I want y'all to do, I mean, and don't make it big. In your own mind, I want y'all to take inventory of the relationships or the conversations in your presence that seem like they're pure or seem like they got an agenda to it. That they 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 not genuine. Maybe they coming at you because of what's in your hand, or maybe they coming at you because they truly love you, or they truly want to you know have a relationship with you, not just what you can do for them or give them. Mm -hmm. You know, pay attention to the true and honest relationships in your life. Those are the people that are your support system that can help, that can make you or break you. If you are connected to people that is just mooching off of you, leeching off of you, tearing you down, or just taking up space in your life, that's the reason why your life ain't going nowhere. So take inventory of the people that you have in your life that have made an impact or have in some type of way, better your life, better, better, your life is better for knowing them or, you know, having that relationship. Because if you find that you have more people in your life that have no, um, just ain't doing nothing for you, then you, you realize why your life is the way it is. But when you have people in your life that want to help you get to the goals and the dreams that you have, then that's how you propel yourself forward. You got to remember your goals and your dreams, what you want to do. Right. Every morning you wake up, you ought to have a vision. Because what's the scripture say? Without a vision, people the people perish. If you ain't got no vision, you perish. Mm -hmm. You ought to wake up every morning with something in mind. I don't care how old we are. Y'all, I'm about to be 50, woo, 3, 54. I can't even remember. <laughs> I'm about to be, yeah, 54. Next month. And God still, I still got a vision. I still, you know, got things that I want to do. Because if you ain't looking towards something, you dying. Right. Even at our age. And I know y'all my seniors, but still, we, we dying. What's the point of sitting up, you know, watching TV all day? What's the point? We got to do something. We got to want something. You know, because that TV can talk you to hell, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You say you 54. I'll be 54 in October. October 28th. I thought you was older than me. I'm no. 60 years old. No. Uh-uh. No. no, I'll be 54 and I'm still cute. 
I don't know about you. <laughs> and I'm still cute. All right, the first, like I say, pure with, with good fruits. You know, they come bearing, you know, you know a fruit by the, by, a tree by the fruit it bears. Yeah. If they bearing fruit, they come good. Now I say without hypocrisy. That hypocrisy means that I don't tell you one thing and have you hold the standards of one thing, but I ain't holding myself to the same standard. You know, like what happened Sunday, I know that the only way home, we got it. But I'm just saying, I know not to do that, but they were getting started. And God said they, that they didn't need to wait that long, so I gave the key, and I told them just give it to the, um, the uh, usher in the back because I didn't want to disrupt because I knew he would be started getting in service by then, so I would get it from her. But this is Bible study time. You know, the same accountability that he expects me to have, I should have for him. That's why we was talking, yeah. So I'm just saying without hypocrisy, I can't expect you to do something that, and then I just get away with it or whatever. That's not right. Because the same doctrine that holds you is, it governs me. And I can say it like this. It comes to the messenger before it, it becomes the message. So without hypocrisy, you know, I can't be smoking cigarettes telling you to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. right. I was saying the other day, you know, everybody like, you live such a boring life or whatever. I said, I can't preach against fornication if I'm fornicating. Right. Right. I can't preach against adultery if I'm committing adultery. Right. My life may look boring to you and I may isolate, be in my own world or whatever, but one thing I can do is as God give me utterance, I can preach and teach that whole Bible. There ain't a lot of them that can. They got to skip over the scriptures that they in because if they don't, that word, that they very word that they preach, remember it's a double-edged sword, that very word that they preach will cut them coming out. Yeah. It will cut them all the way through. Mm -hmm. So I live the life that I live because I live for Christ. Mm -hmm. I live to represent him the way I'm supposed to represent him. I'm not living to be a mockery to him. So one day when that... When God sent me that man or whatever, God knew how to get my attention. Yes, he do. I just don't see where I need one right now. I done raised my kids. and I'm, I'm, I'm a, I don't need to be accountable to nobody. I go when I want to go, do what I want to do. I ain't got to fight with nobody. Or oh, Brianna right now. But when she out, I ain't got to do all that. I can be free and do whatever I want to do. What I need a man for? You need a man to have kids. Mm -hmm. All that's turning thrown in the ocean. Now, I don't, I don't even have none of that no more. Well, my ovaries is, let's just say that. If he ain't give me a baby now, we getting paid. Because I ain't even got the stuff to make a baby. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't need no man now. I mean, I got my own Cadillac, you know, I'm doing my own thing. What I need a man for? But if God sees fit to have me cooking breakfast and washing drawers again, <laughs> If he sees fit, you know, because somebody told me the other day, and I believe that was a word from God, because he said, well, maybe it ain't for you. Maybe it's because that man needs a woman. And it hit me different. And I'm like, oh, Lord, I ain't want to do I just got rid of the kids. What I want to do that for? <laughs> that was my biggest kid or whatever. But like I said, if God sees fit, he know how to get my attention. He do. So... And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. If they ain't making peace, they ain't sowing peace. If they not sowing peace to you, and they not that they're not making peace, why would you follow? When you follow peace, who do you follow? He the Prince of Peace. You follow Christ. So if they not looking like Christ. Why would you follow them? Don't follow them. Don't go, go that the way. way. Go the other way. <laughs> go the other way. Yeah. You got to look like Jesus in order for me to hear you, in order for me to follow you, in order for me, you know, you got to, you, something about Jesus got to be on you. Now, I ain't saying you got to be perfect. I'm not. But if you got some things that God is working on you, and still 20 years later, he's still working on them same things. Something wrong. You must not be listening. 
It didn't take 20 years for God to take cigarettes and alcohol and 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 all that sex. And it didn't take all of that for God to take me. Because when I fell in love with Christ and fell in love with God, all of that stuff started to come up because I had no taste for it no more. Yeah. You know, that's called deliverance. Mm -hmm. He saved me from myself. That's what salvation is, is deliverance. Okay. Being saved from yourself. He saved me. Yeah. So I don't have all of that on the inside of me. So 20, 30 years later, if he's still working on the same things, if he's still trying to get you to stop drinking, or he's still trying to get you to stop, you know, fornicating, something wrong. That means you ain't listening. Right. If God come back, yeah. what you think he gonna say while you sitting there drunk as a skunk? Yeah. What you think he gonna say? Well, I'm gonna give you time. We can, we can wait a few more minutes. No, he gonna honor his word. He done gave us grace and mercy that follows us all the days of our life. He done gave that to us. What more else do he have to give us? So if we can't take grace, the unmerited favor of God, and we can't take the mercy seat that he's given us, and you do what we're supposed to do and walk in obedience in God, what else, what more else can he do? When that time comes, we just going to have to bite the bullet. We just going to have to do, be in the ground, you know, and go the other way because he done gave us more than enough. You can't do it, Well, Lord, I tried, Lord. Yeah. I tried. I tried. Yeah. We. I mean, he. We, he don't owe us nothing else. He gave his life for us. His whole life for us. What else more do we need? What else more do we have to, you know, to expect from him for us to make it into the kingdom of God? By that, if we don't want to do right by that, we don't deserve to be in the kingdom of God because that ain't enough. If that ain't enough, nothing will be enough. We go in right there. Somebody pray us out. God, thank you for everything you did for us. Thank you, Lord. Wakes us up every day and every night. Yes, Lord. Put food on our table. Yes, Lord. Watch over the homes, people, and people in the hospital. Yes, Lord. Watch over the people in old folks' homes. Yes, Lord. And the halfway house and stuff. Yes. Be with them all the way, God. Be with them, Lord. I need more power to be strong with you, God. Yes, Lord. Watch over everybody in here. Yes, watch over them, Lord. God, heal them. Heal them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Wake them up. Yes, Lord. And bring them to you. Bring yes, them to you, Lord. Lord. God, send me out to do the work of you. Yes, Lord. And preach the word of God. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.